Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Friday Facts, number 389, Train Control Improvements. Fantastic, Mr. Ghost. We're going to be reacting to this today. And let me tell you, this is a, this is a doozy, boys and girls. Ho, ho, ho. So we start off with Kovarex and Clonin, the one-two punch, the big boys at Factorio Woob, coming in with the train schedule interrupts, baby. So they, they go into talking about um, you know, reminding us that we, we talked about the rails and elevator rails, which are just, you know, kind of, you know, specially thing, special things that we're going to get in 2.0 to go. We can do crazy train networks now. Bottlenecks are going to be minimized. So now they want to, uh, they say, so it's time to talk about how we improved the way you can control the trains that ride on them. In a sense here, what they have is train schedule interrupts. Let me go here. Train schedule interrupts are a new form of train control. I don't know if this is going to eliminate or obsolete train supply manager, TSM, or LTN, and or. I don't know this. Uh, it seems like it might. So what they're doing here is they are allowing for train schedule interrupts. Let's just take a look at this right here. Now, I think they might have a caption. No, they don't. Okay. Okay. So let's just take a look at the picture here. The picture is probably going to explain more because uh, I, I just summarized that first section there. So in this, we can have an interrupt. And right here, you'll say it's pick up iron. So they have a little icon, pick up iron and drop off iron. So this is basically get this, bring it here, drop it off. And then it's going to go pick up and drop off. So this train will sit until it's empty and sit until it's full. And that's its life forever. Now we have interrupts. And they're tying these into also uh, groups, groupings. So they have this grouping thing now, which they did uh, discuss last time in one of the Friday facts we did prior. So here we have a refuel interrupt, and you can add another interrupt. Here is an edit button that pops this GUI up. So he, uh, whoever named it refuel and the condition is fuel. Yes. Fuel is less than 50. Then it goes to a refuel stop and then it waits until it's above a hundred. I guess this is a fail safe. It won't leave unless it's greater than a hundred, but what you have to have is some kind of a, um, you know, logic circuit to tell you, hey, um, there's a problem over here. Be now, if your fuel system isn't working, you should be punished for it. <laughs> so if your fuel doesn't get above 100, this train's going to sit there. You're going to have a bunch of trains sitting there waiting to be fueled because let's say another train got bottlenecked and can't, you know, your fuel train, let's say it can't get to the location, right? So that could happen there. Uh, so it's better to have this than trains all over the map with no fuel in them, I guess. So, yeah, I guess it's okay to have that, but uh, that way they sit there. So let's go here. with the. So the interrupts are very simple. You specify a list of conditions to trigger the interrupt and the list of target stations plus wait conditions that will be added to the schedule. Whenever the train wants to leave the current station, it checks all interrupts one by one, evaluating the interrupt conditions. If the conditions are fulfilled... The interrupt is activated and the targets are passed, pasted, oh, are pasted into the current schedule as temporary stops. The available conditions are mostly the familiar set from the weight conditions, full slash empty cargo, circuit condition, item slash fluid count, etc. With some special additions that only make sense for interrupts. Oh, special ones. All right. It was very convenient that we had already implemented the concept of temporary stations. Yes, this was used only for manually sending the train somewhere. For those who don't know, the temporary station is something like a one-time order. Uh, once a train leaves the temporary station, the entries are removed from the schedule. And yeah, the LTN uses the temporary stations very well. I, I don't know when, I think he, I don't know when he added it, but... Uh, you can have stops with the same name on the entire map. You Every stop can be named the same. It goes by, um, you know, longitude, latitude on that, you know, or, a, you know, a, a coordinate. 
And uh, that's why LTN is really nice because you don't have to worry about train stop names. The refueling example was the original motivation, but the way it works obviously has much wider range of applications. So we have the generic trains now. And this is where it kind of contends with LTN a little bit, but I'm still kind of um, unsure how this is going to work because, uh, well, you can limit train stops uh, now and you, uh, so, and you can do it based on how much material is in the train stop and deploy more trains than needed. So you can increase your train stop amount, you know, uh, that, that the maximum that train stop can handle. So this might tie into that. So we're getting pretty close to an LTN controller in vanilla. Now I know there's train controllers out there that use commuters and stuff, but the reason that I don't uh, want to use them is because the UPS FPS or the UPS gets chewed up with combinators because they're always checking conditions. So you, it's not um, always a, a good thing. If you have a small map and you're just doing a little you know project, then yeah, it's fine. All right. Since the interrupt can have cargo conditions, we can make an interrupt for each type of cargo saying where it should be delivered. For example, if you have iron ore, go to iron drop, iron ore drop. If you have copper ore, go to copper ore drop, etc. So this is something that I, I want to replay with, so or play around with. So we have a refuel interrupt, cargo, iron, copper, and coal, the big three. Well, there's no stone. Why does the stone get no love, man? Come on. All right. So the item input is full cargo inventory. And th notice how it says item input. That's like a train. Is that like a train stop? That's what I'm confused about. And then we have the interrupt for iron ore here. And it says cargo is zero. And then, so that's the condition. Then we go to drop. Empty cargo inventory is the directive here. So now, if any, now I'm, I'm assuming the train has this stuff on it. And this is iron drop, so it's a stop. But you'd have to have different stops. Like if you have multiple smelter columns, you know, let's say you're doing a mega base, and you got five, six, seven, eight, you know, smelters for iron plate. We're gonna have to have drop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and each train has to be dedicated to that. Now you can have the same same named. Um, you can name all your stops the same, and you can do a um, a disable stop. So if it's full disable to stop but you could get in trouble with disabling stops is, is my point you got to be careful about those you always have to have the tra the train has to go somewhere it always has to have a stop available to stop at all right this means that the train with these kinds of interrupts is now able to deal with whatever cargo you throw at it so it doesn't really care if it should pick up iron or copper or whatever you support with the interrupts at this point there is no reason to distinguish different loading stations okay this is what i'm curious about and as long as you use the train stop limits, bingo, you can name all the loading stations the same and just use the one schedule to manage all the things. Okay. The one big advantage of this system is that all your trains are shared between all the possible routes. So you don't have to think about copper trains are running low or I didn't have enough circuits circuit trains etc there's just one big bag of trains and you either have enough or not now the question is ltn will tell you when you don't have enough trains so again that's another feature ltn has there is something you could do where if you have a stop bunch of stops you can sense if you have trains sitting there and if it's zero then you might want to let yourself know with a speaker hey you ran out of trains in your yards okay so maybe you need to add, uh, you know, some more trains to your system. Now, oh, the depot problem. Here we go. This is all very nice. Oh, hell no. Do we have depots? Are we able to do depots now? <laughs> Please. This is all very nice, but it kind of creates a new problem. And it's the fluctuation of trains availability based on all the unloading stations being backed up or not. This can lead to an excess of trains in the system when some of the resources or production is running low and we need a way to deal with it. So we added a special interrupt condition called destination full, which allows us to make an interrupt to send a train to a depot if all the item inputs are occupied. 
so it doesn't block the current station. So we have a, a temporary drop here. It, it's a refuel, a depot, and a cargo. So if we edit the depot, destination full or no path, and empty cargo, depot, 30 seconds, add weight condition. I'm okay. So what depot 30 seconds save interrupt. I'm curious about this now because is this train going to sit in the depot until there is a need because well now they're only doing iron probably for simplicity so they could show that they have these things here because it'll scroll off the screen in that case. Now let's read on here. Some people notice a roll of deposit stations in some of our screenshots this is what they're they were for i didn't notice that uh man some people are so observant i just read and that's it you know all right initially interrupts were specific to each schedule but we eventually realized that this is a really good idea to be able to share the same interrupt between different schedules we had the problem where once we wanted to upgrade our fuel from coal to rocket fuel for instance we would have to go through each schedule and update the interrupt, which was not only a big hassle, but often resulted in some trains not being updated. So we made it that the interrupts are shared globally, identified by their name. And when you edit an interrupt, it changed. Oh, it changes for all the trains with that interrupt. This made it much more convenient and less of an less error prone. Interrupt in interrupt. Are you kidding me? Normally, when an interrupt is activated, other interrupts won't be able to interfere until it is finished. But in some specific cases, this is too limiting, so we added another special interrupt condition called in interrupt. This allows the interrupt to trigger while another interrupt is in progress, which clears the original interrupt and replaces it with a new interrupt targets. There is some specific cases where this is a crucial thing to have, but it is on a planet we didn't reveal yet. So more on that later. Ooh, I can't wait. Reservation upgrade. All the more advanced interrupt schedule systems heavily depends on the train stop limit reservation limit. This is what prevents all the trains in your system trying to go to one stop. But there was one little problem with that with the system, which could even cause traffic jams and deadlocks, or and or, and which was made much more important with the generic schedules. Okay. The problem is that once the train decides to leave the station, it instantly clears the reservation of the train limit while still physically blocking the stop. This lets another train start its journey towards the or toward the stop while there might not be enough space to wait without blocking the main line. So we fixed it. So the train will only give up its reservation once it leaves the block with the train stop. I would be interested to know if other people encounter this problem in 1.1 as well. Um, I don't use those. I use mods for the train controllers because, yeah, they're much more robust. Uh, train groups now. The lack of train groups and the inability to edit multiple schedules all at once was annoying, but wasn't that important before interrupts because you didn't really need to update slash tweak the existing schedules that much. But with interrupts and more generic trains, you need to update the schedule slash interrupts of existing trains all the time. So this obviously had to be done. The approach is similar to what we did with other groups or grouping changes in the 2.0 update, logistic groups and interrupts, yes. So here we have another um, schedule, locomotive. So we're on a locomotive. Train group trains, no group of science. We have oil. Look at this. They have the numbers on here. Trains, oil trains, artillery. We have coal, copper, copper plate, green circuits, iron ore, iron plate, steel, and stone. And then we have here trains in a group. Trains is in a group. Okay. And so what do we have here? So any changes to the schedule of one member of the group will update the, in, the whole group. Importantly, this ignores the temporary stops. 
as they are part of the state of the individual train. So hijacking a train to chauffeur you somewhere won't break anything. It only makes sense to show the groups in the train overview. Okay. So here we have train overview and we have a groups tab. They have 65 trains, 87 stations and 11 groups. And they're, oh wow, look at this. This is the iron trains group. And I guess this is an iron smelter here. Okay. Starting at, uh, standing at iron drop. Okay. So now you can just place down a new train, set it to the group you want, and off it goes. If you have too many of one type, you can just reassign the train's group and turn it from an iron train to a copper train without hunting down an existing train to copy paste from. When you add a new interrupt to handle a new item type, it will be added to all in the group and everything will just work. Ah, it's a fall, it's a, a fall or Bethesda Todd Howard <laughs> reference. It'll just work. Oh my God. Without any needless train slash schedule bureaucracy. Now, come on guys, Todd Howard, he's just a figurehead, you know. He is a director of Bethesda. Um, and you know what? The Fallout games, I'm playing Fallout right now and I really love the Fallout franchise, so I got a kick out of it. Um, Oblivion, uh, Elder, was it? Uh, the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, I love that game. Skyrim was kind of, eh, you know, it was like a copy, not necessarily a copy paste of Oblivion, but they reused some of the, some of the missions in Oblivion, and I was kind of sad about that. I thought it was lazy. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> All right, I'm so excited about this. All right, auto, auto color based on destination. This is cool. Okay, this is another thing teased and noticed on previous Friday facts. God, these people are smart, man. They're so observant. We like to color our trains based on what they deliver, but with generic systems, any train can carry anything and static coloring just won't work, won't do the trick. Yeah, and that's the problem with TSM, well, LTN. TSM, you can still do it because there are dedicated trains, dedicated stops. Uh, so yeah, um, you can not You can do it with TSM. Uh, initially, we wanted to somehow add coloring to the schedule GUI but it would be a hassle where every station entry needs to have yet another UI element in a GUI, which is already not that simple, but we realized that a much more natural approach is available. So we added a simple checkbox on by default to the locomotive color widget to change its color based on the destination. Now I wonder if this is gonna work with LTN and, and TSM if it's loaded with that item you should be able to do this, I would think, because, yeah, it's under the color icon. Use destination train color. Train will copy its color from the destination train stop, updated each time the train leaves the station. But does it read what it's loading? Like, right now, it's loading copper. Does it have a, uh, you know, uh, an RGB color? I would think. It seems like it does. But they're only showing us copper here. Okay. Ah, here's the conclusion. All right, so we have uh, we have been asked to do something like logistic trains many time. Schedule interrupts provide a more generic system where logistic trains is just one of the things you can build from it. For example, you can have a system where you let the train or you let the stop decide where to send the train using the circuit conditions and interrupts. Okay, it is also more approachable because you can use interrupts for just refueling or something simple while still keeping the normal schedules. We have been playing with this for quite some time and it's one of the features we couldn't play without at this point. To clarify, this is a core engine feature which will be available for everyone with the 2.0 base game update. Yes, we didn't stop there. We have more improvements related to trains prepared for 2.0 but we'll have to leave them for another day. Let us know what you think at the usual places. Ah, they could have did some kind of train thing there. Well, this is awesome, man. I'm really excited about this because sometimes, you know, you just want to train. I mean, dumping something into an LTN depot and just setting it off is, is fine. LTN is really nice and it scales so well. Sometimes you do have something in, a, in an overhaul mod where it becomes... It's more of, it's, LTN just doesn't have the capability to handle it. 
And TSM just adds, tr you're just add throwing trains at every problem you have or everything. Every time you add something, you're throwing more trains at it. You're throwing more trains at it. This is nice for overhaul mods and, you know, the overhaul mod crazy people like me, where I just have this one little thing I need to handle and it's a very expensive item. I don't want to void it or, you know, destroy it because you, you can void stuff usually in, in the overhaul mods. And, uh... You know, now I can set up a, a, a real quick and easy thing to handle a situation and I don't want to bog, you know, try and have something fail or cause a problem with the other two con train, train controllers that you, you can, you know, have. There's also, um, there's a third controller I haven't gotten into yet. I think it's CyberSyn. It's supposed to be better than LTN, but I haven't used it yet. I haven't had a chance. So anyway, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the Friday Facts. I'm really looking forward to this because trains, I think, are just... They're, they're a part, they're, they're the reason I play Factorio. And when I see stuff like this and they're actually finally getting to something like this, I'm very happy to see it. I do understand that they, they had to really think on it and roll it out in a correct way. And obviously the interrupts are new now, but then now they have the groups. You know, the grouping is what makes this even more powerful. So once they got the grouping, the logistic grouping, and they're coupling that with the interrupts, and they already had the capability of temporary stops and stuff. So yeah, this is going to make trains, vanilla trains, even more fun to work with, I think. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Friday Facts. I'm looking forward to this. Man, every time they put out something like this, it makes me want to, I really look, I'm looking forward to just playing a vanilla game, you know, with this cool stuff here. All right. Well, Hopefully we get some good stuff next week. I'll cover it. Uh, I did skip last week's because it was kind of eh, boring. So I only cover them. I don't want to waste your time with boring stuff. And this is definitely not boring. So I'll see you next week if it's good. Have a good one. Peace out.